Matt Manning to cough up the ball. And from just across the red line, Bronco Segoda sent a header into the net. The score was tied 1-1. And along with Sagoda, everyone in the building still had a championship celebration in mind. Still in the first, though, the blast came back. The leading scorer in the postseason put them back in front. Billy Ronson with a back heel goal past Nagara. It was 2-1. And now Kenny Cooper and company realized they were still alive in their bid for a title. The teams went to the half, tied 2-2. Then in the third, the blast made its move. Off a corner kick, David Burns scores from the far post. His second goal of the series. It was big. Baltimore goes in front, 3-2. to two. Then a defensive letdown. Gus McCallis tries to beat Mobilio in midfield, but fails. Mark Metric will overlap out of midfield and get the pass. Nagara has no chance. They score, and Baltimore goes ahead 4-2. And the air was quickly leaving San Diego's party balloon. Quite obviously, Ron Newman and the Sockers disappointed about the prospects of having to return back to the East Coast. But things brightened when midway through the fourth, McCallus atoned for his earlier mistake. He scored off a free kick, and it was 4-3 Baltimore. And suddenly, on the strength of that goal, the fans were again starting to believe that a championship could be decided on this night after all. But then the San Diego Sockers were forced to go with the sixth attacker. And it was disastrous. Late in the game, Carl Valentine, who had his best outing of the series, scored the first of two empty netters to put it away for the blast. They win game five by a final score of 6-3. Emotions ran high Tuesday. They no doubt will run high again here tonight in Baltimore. Coming up, it's game six of the championship series on Prime Ticket next. On Thursday, the Baltimore Blast stunned the defending champion San Diego Sockers, handing them a crushing 7-0 defeat. An ecstatic crowd saw the regular season champs dismantle the proud Sockers and position themselves for a shot at the 1989 crown. The Game 6 hero was Blast forward David Byrne, who's never won an MISL championship. Burns scored two goals and four assists as Baltimore overwhelmed Ron Newman and company. Perhaps the biggest play of the game, a goal by David Byrne, 25 seconds into the second period. His shot from outside the red line found its way between the legs of San Diego goalkeeper Victor Nagara and into the back of the net. It gave the Blast a 2-0 lead. The shattered Sockers never recovered, nor could they stop Burn or the Blast. And tonight, Baltimore hopes to enjoy the ultimate celebration. The season has come down to one game, Game 7, and it's on Prime Ticket next. As the defending champion San Diego Sockers battle the Baltimore Blast. Hello again, everyone. I'm Randy Hahn, and welcome once again to our live simulcast from Baltimore, the site of Game 7 here on Prime. The champion will be decided. It'll either be the San Diego Sockers or the Baltimore Blast. Take a look at the referees working this game number seven. Herb Silva and Marty Templin, two of the best in the league, will be working the floor, and Joe Manfrey will be in the box. In goal tonight for Baltimore, shutting out San Diego in game number six. First time there was ever a shutout in this building. First time the Sockers have ever been shut out in playoff competition, and Scott Manning turned the trick. Seven and four during the 89 playoffs and he is the man on the spot for Kenny Cooper's team. At the other end, filling in so well this year, taking over as the number one goalkeeper for the San Diego Soccer. Speaking of Victor Noguera, seven and six during the playoffs with the goals against of 3.66. Can't get that first time shot off. Back across to Segoda now at the right point. Winds up into the box, Dougherty turns, shoots, scores! Paul Dougherty puts San Diego in the lead with a power play goal. And it's 1-0 here in the first period. And the deal by Bronco right to Dowdy. And they were marking him off. They were at least three or four feet off of Dowdy. And that gave him room to turn and shoot. That was a defensive mistake. And Dowdy has found some room. And he, now he has found the back of the net. Sagoda getting the business from Rusty Troy, which leaves Dowdy alone. Late on that play was Mark Metric. In fact, they were marking 
Jungle double teaming him at the back post, a mistake. Nectric just got lost defensively. Look at him, he's saying, oops, I missed my man. And Dowdy just wheeled and dealed and fired it in from the top of the box. That's a great play by Paul Dowdy, who sat during the first half of game number six, third goal of the playoffs. Another added aspect to that goal, Bill, is that Dowdy got that one on a little bit of a hop. It was bouncing to him ever so slightly. He settled it, but it still had the bounce on it. That got more velocity on the shot, and Manning was facing a wicked blast, and that's what put San Diego in ever since. Come on. Hoskovy now off the corner kick. The blast with a unique configuration here. Three players wide. Now they spread out. Hoskovy to Frederick. And they score! it up and the Sockers burned again on a dead ball situation Bill they've got to stop this yeah, and again it's Hoskaby this time they didn't go back post instead they went to the open man that was metric screenshot by Noguera in fact Victor thought Gus would make the save and Mokalis was in position to make that save Gus just fanned on it you're the goalkeeper now here it's coming Mokalis is there and he lifts his leg up and it goes past him Gus should have made that save Victor has to have confidence in his defenders and you can't have confidence if you make plays like that. I think Gus is still upset about what happened in midfield, and it lets that call or non-call at midfield affect his play right there. He's got to recompose himself. Metric scores, and it's 1-1 with 12 and a half. Throws it. He was just caught out of position that time. He challenged Carrick, and that's really all he could do. And he just lost track a little bit of where he was, but if he wasn't out that far, I think Carrick would have been able to chip him exactly what he was looking for. Manning doesn't make that save. That's in the goal, because I don't think Valentine could have come back. Will it be a penalty kick? They set it down on the penalty kick spot, but I think the Shockers players put it there. And I would suspect we will have a restart for the blast without the penalty kick, or maybe not. Well, Valentine says, hey, I'm going to kick it away from there, and we'll let you decide, Marty Templin. The boys in blue don't have the choice, and it will be a penalty kick, Randy. It will be a penalty kick, San Diego. As they say, the carriage would have had a clear look at goal. So a golden opportunity presents itself here now for the Sockers. Segoda, who has missed more than one this year, will take the penalty. Well, I agree, because on that replay, it certainly looked like if Valentine was not going to get back and make that stop. put it on goal. Make Manning make the save. Don't miss the net. Segoda missed the net badly in the Dallas series. But they go back to him, showing confidence in their leader. Oh, you have to. 1-1 one, one the score and a chance to go ahead. Here's Bronco. The shot and the save. The rebound. He scores! The play is live on the penalty kick, and Segoda nets it. What a second effort. No, they're waving it off. They're waving it off. Herzog, no goal. They're going to do it again, Bill. I don't know what the problem was. Manning moved, and that's why they oh. wouldn't it down. So that's unfortunate for San Diego. Everybody stood still and watched Bronco move in. That was a great play by Bronco. So it was a good call by Herb Silva. You've got to watch that keeper. You've got to make sure he doesn't move. Now Manning, watch the goal line. He's moving, quite obviously, before. So give Herb Silva credit. It's a gutsy call to take that goal away from San Diego. But he blew the whistle before Segoda took right. the rebound right. shot. It's well, an excellent call by Silva. That's what I'm saying. I mean, and he stuck to his guns with about 10 or 12 blue shirts surrounding him saying, hey, don't take one away from him. So now Manning's got to do it again. What Segoda did, I think he was thinking so much, I'm going to put it on net. He drilled it right into Manning, who didn't have to do much. You got to go one way or another. The feeling on Manning is keep the ball high and yeah. you can beat him. Does Segoda try that again, or does he go low? And I guarantee you this, everybody will be ready for a rebound this time. They were just standing in cement. Bronco went right up the middle and blasted it home. Yeah, it was a good bounce to him. So here's try number two. Hiking's going to go to the right. Manning's left. Bronco's right. Or set. Here's Segoda. The shot. He scores! 
so second time he also finds net and the Sockers take the lead for the second time in game seven and he did go right that time and drilled it as Manning flopped on his side he didn't want anything to do with that so Bronco again on goal this time he gets it and it counts and it's two to one San Diego on the penalty kick here's Sagoda now Manning where he's still moving beforehand but he guessed right and Bronco went the way that maybe we guessed right up here and he just drilled it home great play by Sagoda with the cannon right foot and it's two to one and I think that might bring Sagoda back into the game his 11th goal of the playoffs yeah he's emotional he's back on the penalty at the Baltimore Arena. It's San Diego 2, the blast one in the final game of 1989 season. Tonight because Manning was throwing great balls in and they were just opening us, opening us up at the back, so we've denied them that tonight. I think you're also taking away their second chances. They've had some good chances on rebounds and you're more cognizant of the fact that, hey, there might be a loose ball in front and you're sweeping it away. Yeah, I think the, the guys are just going to put their bodies there tonight and um, take a few shots, whatever it takes, Bill and um, we, we still realize that the hard part's to come. All right, what about the second half? Uh, you're going to try to slow down the tempo again? I, I thought you controlled the tempo pretty well in that first quarter, and the game was yours. I think it's up to Baltimore to come out of their shell. Um, it's up to them to produce the goals, and if we just keep on playing, we feel we're going to get another two or three goals the way we're playing at the moment, and um, we'll just take advantage of whatever Baltimore does. Okay. Uh, how about the coach? How's he feeling? I mean, is he, uh, has he got you guys going, or, or, or how's he controlling things? I think Ron realizes the importance of this game, and he's um, so competitive, and he wants to win as much as anyone. And um, he's just in there trying to keep cool heads at the moment and prepare us for the second half. All right, go get him in the second half. Thanks, William. All right, the captain of the San Diego Soccer's Brian Quinn. And for being our guest, he will receive a gift certificate from Valley Sport with stores in Fashion Valley and Horton Plaza. It is game number seven of the Major Indoor Soccer League Championship Series, and the soccer's on top. Hey, Sagoda buried the rebound, but they called it back, and it was a good call by Herb Silva. The second try, well, Scott Manning flopping around like a tuna down in that goal, and Bronco Sagoda just drives it home, and the Soccers took a 2-1 to one lead. 11th goal of the playoffs for Sagoda, you know, looking at that replay on the simulcast again. Man Manning moves second time as well, but I don't think Herb Silva <laughs> or Marty Temple and the referees were going to call it back a second time. Sagoda puts the Soccers in the lead. Now we go to the third period, Bill. The Baltimore Blast feel this is their year of destiny. They put a lot of pressure on themselves to win a championship over Ron Newman. Kenny Cooper wants to beat his nemesis so badly, and really all the pressure now falls on the shoulders of the Blast. I think two words for the second half for both teams. Tempo and and composure for Baltimore this crowd is really going to be up in the second half and you just can't let that self get, let yourself get nervous about it you've got to draw upon that for energy now for San Diego they've been in this position before for many years many of these players they feel like the championship is theirs hey you're not going to take it away from us well it's still just a one goal game overtime I suppose is not out of the question if any championship can be decided that would probably be the most exciting fashion ever I don't know if we can handle it here <laughs> we'll try we're back with the second half in a moment the soccer's leading Two to one, bouncing back after that embarrassing defeat Thursday. We'll be back with the third period kickoff.